and, and thank you to thank you guys hanging in. It's been a long day, so I appreciate your time. And um, we're going to talk about an interesting topic today. Um, the the reason I'm here is uh, about about a month ago, Luke pinged me. He's like he asked me if I had any examples or things I could share simply using the out of the box visual collaboration games that are in the current platform. And so. Um, I mentioned that I was actually using them for performance reviews. And the company I work for, Asynchrony, we're a software development company in St. Louis, Missouri. We have what we call an advocate program, where um, all of our employees, if they're interested, they're paired up with an advocate. So I have an employee who I support. And one thing we do in our advocate program is we allow our employees to work with their advocate to complete their performance review. So it's a, as opposed to a performance review, which is very much a single process where you're typing into a survey tool effectively, we made this more of an interactive active experience. So, um, but with that said, a, a little bit of a brainstorm. I want you guys to think real quick with me here. Um, when I say performance reviews, what is the first word that comes to mind? Think about it for about five seconds. Okay, now you guys know where we're going. I need, can someone, someone over here just shout it out. What's the word? Ick. Yeah, ick. Okay, how about over here? Another one. Awful. Okay. So, and, and by a show of hands, is there anyone in the room here that actually has to do these still this year? It's kind of the season for this. Yeah. So there's a few of us. So, and I still have a few more to do. I'm overdue because I have to do a lot of them, unfortunately, or a few. Um, but yeah, so there, it's not the most fun topic. And so using innovation games, we actually found a, a way that this actually was kind of fun. Um, so a few limitations, uh, which I think you guys are probably aware of. A lot of times, uh, organizations want to get feedback from other people, and what happens? You don't have the right people involved. So this idea of maybe someone in human resources picks out the people that are going to be asked to provide peer feedback, and since human resources is disconnected from what's actually going on in the, in the organization, they pick the wrong people. However, those people provide input, and that can impact how someone's reviewed. There's also this problem, again, where feedback is not transparent. A lot of the tools out there that facilitate performance reviews, what, it, what is the user experience? You get an invitation, you go to a website, you type feedback into a form, and it's a one-way process. And as I give feedback about a colleague who I work with closely, I really don't have any awareness as to what other people are saying about that colleague. And what's, what's sad is that the opportunity is missed that maybe if someone shares a comment that I really agree with and I want to kind of plus one it or, or comment on that, I'm not aware of that. So the, the quality of the feedback suffers. Um, this idea of one-way communication, um, the person who's doing a self-assessment, people who are providing inputs, everyone puts their input into a, like a one-way process, and then at the end, the employee gets kind of a review, which isn't very effective. Um, participants aren't engaged because, as, as Luke says better than anyone here, surveys suck, and so this idea of a lot of um, the tools that people use for performance reviews, they're survey-based. So that, they just don't work well. And most importantly, one thing that I, I think I hope everyone has seen here and, and knows in the community is that games can help us get feedback faster. So this idea of, OK, wow, well, I've got this 10-question survey I need to fill out about someone I work with. It takes some time. If I could log in and play a visual collaboration game, I could very quickly just add some quick items to the canvas. And that will actually help me give it some feedback faster to allow one of my employees to improve. So, so I took all this and I had an idea. Um, and so what, we, what I wanted to do was to try to use visual collaboration games um, in a way to administer performance reviews and support advocacy. Um, one thing I know I've mentioned to a few people is that this idea of providing clear instructions as to what a game is is very important. So what I've actually did for the people who tried this with me is uh, we made little selfie YouTube videos of how the process worked. So I'll show one of these. It takes about two minutes. But what you'll see is you'll see this, this person who I'm an advocate for. Her name is Melanie. And she, she works at Asynchrony with me. She's a, she's a quality advocate for a team. And so I, working with Melanie, we worked and we got some information. We, we, she set some goals. We actually um, used a, a discovery process. So we played a very simple version of prune the product tree to do that. And then once she had her goal, we, we wanted to appeal to the community to get feedback. And so we, we made a little selfie, which I'll show here. And, um, we'll see how this goes. Hi everyone, I'm Jason, and this is... Melanie. And I'm Melanie's advocate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we're here today to talk about asking you to share a few minutes so you can give Melanie a bit of feedback to help her improve. But to set that discussion up, I've actually asked Melanie to brainstorm a little bit on a goal she'd like to achieve. So she's going to tell you about that real quick. Go for and it. I would like to consistently be considered a valued member of the MFK team and meet the needs of the team. I would like to help with improvements on the MFK and make sure that they're measurable, and especially in the area of testing. Um, I'd like to be a consultant anytime a team member 
is having an issue with the MFK, then for them to be able to consistently come to me and I'd be able to help them with their questions about the MFK. And lastly, a customer liaison. I've enjoyed the time I've spent working with Major Thompson and I'd like to be able to continue in that role. That is a really awesome goal, Melanie. And you know what? I think it sounds like paradise. So I'm going to put my paradise up here. Because what we're going to ask you guys to do to share some feedback with Melanie is we're going to ask you to play an online game called Speedboat. You may have played it in a retrospective. In this case, in our Speedboat game, Paradise here is represented by Melanie's goal that she's described here. So here's, Mel so here's Paradise. That's where we're going. Here's Melanie. Melanie's on our really, it's a really classy boat that we got here. And of course, the boat's in the water here. Okay, so the boat's going over here. And so we, we want to ask for your feedback on two different criteria. First and foremost, here's Mr. Wind, okay? Mr. Wind here is ideally, he's, it's a metaphor. Things maybe that Melanie could do or that you could help Melanie with to help the speedboat go faster. So you've heard what Melanie wants to do. What can you do to help her improve and go faster? Also important, what are the anchors? So what are the things maybe that you're aware of or that you've observed that's holding Melanie back from achieving this goal? You'll log into the game using, the, using the, the link that's in the email that also had this video. And then just like in a retrospective, you'll be able to put virtual post-it notes here on the canvas across basically things that will help Melanie go faster and improve, and also things maybe holding her back. So we'll get your data, and of course, we'll talk about it, and that's going to help Melanie improve, and we thank you in advance for your time. Thank you. I think I missed my calling to be a weather reporter in the 70s with the things we moved around. But so that was the idea. Um, we applied the five whys to this. Um, so this idea here that, um, so we applied the five whys. So just a, a couple of things to make sure the concept held up. Um, we felt that using games versus an online survey, we, really, we, had better, we saw we had better engagement, and we had people who were interested. Um, a cool thing that happened during the process, people in the company kind of got wind that we were doing this, and we, um, we had invited some people, I'll mention how we did that, but other people found out about it, and so they actually joined the game to provide feedback. So that was an unintended consequence. Um, people got two-way feedback, so when I logged into the game, other people could see the feedback that people had shared with Melanie, and that inspired them to maybe share some other suggestions. So there was full transparency. So if you know the way the IG platform works, you log in, you have to identify yourself, and so at that point, we asked people to be honest, but then people could see exactly who shared what items on the canvas, and it was interesting. It really allowed for some discussions to have, and people that maybe offered to help, you know, we, we, could, we could identify that, and Melanie could connect with those people to help her improve. Um, people could have direct involvement by, again, setting their goals. It's Melanie, she said what her own goal was, so she owned it. Hopefully that promotes her follow-through, and so because she's, she's bought into it. Um, and the nice thing about using the IG platform is it's easy to extract the data out of the tool. Um, our asynchrony has a parent company, and we have to use a, a process for our, our performance reviews for our parent company. So I had to go into the tool, extract data out, and then go ahead and put that into a form that I had to turn into an online system. But I could do an export, do post-processing, and almost kind of copy and paste the report together. So. So the way that you can do this and run the, an end-to-end -end performance review process with a series of games is as follows. You kind of have this idea of identifying people to provide feedback using a game like Spiderweb, this idea of maybe doing a self-assessment with the staff member using something like a SWOT analysis, then this idea of maybe having goals and using the metaphor of the product tree, where you're putting actions onto the product tree and then organizing them, this idea of speedboat to build advocacy, and then, of course, getting data out of the system. So, a few just details on ideas for how to use a game like Spiderweb. So this idea that we have a Spiderweb and we use it to map out our web of influence. So you would invite the person to join the game. They're going to play by themselves. So these games will be set up as long-running games. That's one thing we actually did when we set these up. And they'll join the game, and the first thing they're going to put onto the canvas are who are the people that they really value feedback from. Out of those people, then, we're going to ask that person to identify a subset of those people as what I called trusted advisors. So those are the people that I really value feedback from because I work with them closely or I have a close professional relationship with them. So once we do that, those trusted advisors will have special roles throughout the process, and we would do something to actually go ahead and invite them to join the spiderweb game as well. And so perhaps I have a colleague that I've invited as a trusted advisor, and they say, you know, Jason, you should really get some feedback from this person who you didn't think about on your own, but you know, why don't you invite them? So at that point, the trusted advisors can actually add some more people to the web. This thing gives us our people who we really want to involve in the process. The next thing is the individual will then go ahead and do a SWOT analysis. So again, this is a, a long play game that they could play with the visual collaboration platform. 
they're going to play, they're going to start by themselves, where they would populate the canvas for SWAT, so strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. But then the thing that I think is nice is since they've identified those trusted advisors, let's invite the trusted advisors into the game. And number one, maybe they have some suggestions. They might ask, um, they could add to the canvas, or using chat, they could ask clarifying questions. Um, something that's interesting about this that I experimented with was saying, let's just leave the game open. So maybe they ask a question, and the facilitator's not there, the person's not there, so it sits in the chat, and then the person goes back to the game, and they answer it later on. So you could almost do this in a disconnected fashion. So, But the idea is people get that data here, and um, many times a performance review process has a self-assessment component. So once we have this data, that, this idea of using the metaphor of the product tree to really say that the product in this case is your career. So what are the goals or the actions that you're looking for? And to, at that point, use this idea of saying that something I've seen people do many times as they work on individual improvement coaching is they may take on a plan that's too ambitious. So the thing I love about using the tree is that the center of the canvas is constrained and you could actually identify a region there to say that these are the immediate actions that you want to start working on to facilitate your improvement and you can constrain the number of items that the person can put in there to force them to prioritize. And the nice thing about a tree then is suppose they have an improvement that has multiple actions. They could break those down and they could actually put those onto the canvas. And this is a great opportunity where other people in the process, maybe the trusted advisors, they could come in, they could look at the product tree and they could provide some feedback or they could ask clarifying questions. Again, doing all of that activity through the, through the online platform. Um, think Speedboat, you guys, kinda, you guys saw how we set that up. So real simple, we, we did this after the video. This is the game that was pushed out to everyone in the process. So anyone who was in the spider web got an invitation to play the game. So they, um, in this case, they're playing Speedboat, thinking about the goal that the person said in, in the video. So this is my goal, this is what I wanna do. And so as, a, as someone who's part of the organization who works with me, what can you do to help me improve? And maybe what are the things that as a member of a team, I'm not aware of that you could point out to me that I could work to avoid. Um, or maybe if you share something, and I know you shared it, so like maybe Nancy adds something to the canvas, and it, I don't know what it is. I can find Nancy, and I can ask her clarifying questions about that to figure out how I can avoid it. So um, again, a really powerful tool in that sense. Um, and then as the, at the last, as I said at the onset, a great thing you could do easily. Once you've played these games, they're all on the platform. You can export the results. And then if you have to put some paperwork together, which in this case we, we had to, you can do that um, pretty easily. So having done this, a couple of learnings or just suggestions I would share. Um, as I mentioned before, this idea of keeping all your games open was interesting. At one point I thought, let's keep the games closed. Because you know this is personal data, but just to keep it simple, we made them all open. And we actually had people join games because, again, they heard about this Oh, Jason's doing this weird experiment online. It's crazy. People were actually posting it. We, have a, we, have, we use Slack. So people were posting it on Slack. They're like, what's up with this? And the URL got out. And next thing you know, people are checking it out and providing feedback. So um, I would recommend to keep things open. Um, for this to work, this idea of having the game set up for where the person can initially play. And then what, what I used is I just used a schedule. Uh, we actually like scheduled an Outlook meeting. And that had the URL for everyone to join. That, that seemed to work pretty well since uh, Right now, there isn't a scheduling capability really built into the platform that will push notifications. So we, we simply use the tools we had, which was our email system. Uh, this idea of posting reminders in the game chat about what the rules are, having a video to make that clear. Since um, I'll share in my organization, the platform is, is new to many people. So we wanted to make sure people were really understood and they could be successful in using the process. And last but not least, this idea is that as the facilitator um, or the producer to monitor the gameplay, Obviously, this is human resources, so there are certain rules of engagement, things that cannot be discussed. So um, we did provide some guidance about that in the gameplay about, you know, this should be about professional activities and certain activities or things should not be discussed to, um, to keep the game legit. So, and kind of like in the theme of the last presentation, we use, simply used four games, but many of the core innovation games are applicable to this. Um, empathy Map is a great one to think about. I'm sure if, if Scotty were going to do this, he'd start with that because he loves to talk about empathy. Um, but Delta Plus, real simple, uh, buy a feature, especially for people that have a matrix management staff to try to get consensus amongst their managers about what to focus on. Um, on Target, that's a new game um, that I have. It's kind of like we're, you know, I have a big target, what's on Target? 2020 would be another great one, so the list goes on. But um, that was basically it. So. Um, I enjoyed the experiment. 
I'm thankful for you guys for wanting to learn about it. I'm thankful to Luke for the invitation, and I'd welcome any questions you have briefly. So. So the question was, how did he get HR to go along with it? How did we get HR to go along with this? So um, as I mentioned, we have this advocacy program that when we rolled it out, we coupled our performance review process with it. And in doing so, we got approval to have open discussions whereby performance reviews were an activity that were completed by an advocate and an employee having discussions. And so in this place, we simply used the games as a mechanism to have discussions. And so by that nature, it was valid. So Jason, um, fantastic. Uh, I can see how this would energize all of the stuff we hate about performance reviews. But now the million dollar question, how does this result into whether I get a five and a raise? <clears throat> because uh, what I didn't see was a mechanism by which it all comes down to a number. Because at the end of the day, your rank and file, they're going to be, it's great that I have this newfound support of people around me, but Where's, what about the number? So I'll share that. that that's, a, that's an experiment that we're, we're going through in real time since, as I mentioned, as part of this advocacy program, we have people filling out these, these, review, these review submissions that do not have the traditional quantitative data that you typically see on, a, on an enumerated review. And so we're in the process, and our organization is figuring out then how that will impact other elements of the process. Does that answer your question? So, so as part of this new proposal for a different process, they agreed to deviate from having a quantitative score. I'm really intrigued. How open and honest were people about development as opposed to here, you're great because, because that group setting can sometimes, I think. Uh, Could you repeat one more time? So how open were people to giving real hard feedback, negative feedback about you know this person? I, I think what I would say is, we didn't see a lot of negative feedback shared in the games or in the tool, uh, but what we did see was a lot of constructive feedback and really a lot of offers of assistance and advocacy. So, you know, okay, now that I know what you want to do and you've said that I want to connect with you in the organization, here's something that is within my scope or my power that I can help you with. So we saw a lot of that instead of um, negative comments. We're still kind of going through this, so we, we I'll share light of travel. I haven't really had that discussion yet, so I know it was it was fun, and we're, we'll see how it all plans out. So real life experiment in, in process here. Okay, answer this question. How many how many of you feel that this would put you in an uncomfortable space in the multi dimensional space of collaboration? And why? No, I said, I, I feel like it would put me in an uncomfortable multidimensional space. I was agreeing with you. Oh, I, yes. I, 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 <laughs> no, and I said, yes, me. It, because it, it's, it's clearly not uncomfortable for him because he tried it out. Did it feel weird when you were thinking about this? No, it didn't really. Um, it, yeah, so I, I have an advocate too. So I've, I've done my own, and I guess I could have shown my own video, which would have been very interesting. But um, it's, again, I, I participated as well. So. so I wonder how much culture allows this to go on, because I'm having a hard time imagining this in certain environments. So maybe I should have prefaced that, that our organization, we're, we're a small development company. Um, teams are self-managing, open work environment. Uh, very, very much the self-organizing, self-managing concept. So this, this aligns very well to that aspect of our corporate culture. And, and something that I know I've, I've shared with a few people we sometimes struggle with is as a small self-managing company with a larger parent company that isn't really self-managing, what, what, what was out of place was our traditional performance view process, which was you know, the traditional quantitative evaluation, you know, one through five. And that didn't fit in with the way that we worked normally as an organization. So this aligns much better to that. And that's a question of, you know, what is the future, right? Is the future going to be holacracy? Is it going to be manage it 3.0? How, how does that relate? And, and, you know, how are we going to reach our millennials? And maybe this is the a, a means by looking at some aspect of performance review.
Very interesting. Thank you so much again. Thank you.